general manager says that Cam Newton would be picked up by at least 10 teams in the NFL if he was put on the trading block. With Kyle Allen continue to dominate and Christian McCaffrey becoming an MVP candidate, do you put Cam Newton back in the game and potentially ruin the little mojo they've got going since he's left with his Liz Frank injury? He's back. He's practicing. Who knows what they're going to do? They're going to have to make some real decisions. Here's our five landing spots that we have come upon. Tennessee Titans. Because mm-hmm. what happened with Mariota Tenno. That's pretty self-explanatory. I think the Titans become a good team. If Cam Newton can play like Cam Newton played before it seemed as if he got his happiness sucked out of him by Vaughn Miller in that Super Bowl. So if he goes to a new spot, has to prove himself to a new group of humans, has a chip on his shoulder, wants to save his legacy as an MVP candidate, as a Super Bowl quarterback, as a guy that can take over games, he could be great with the Tennessee Titans, depending upon what they're looking to do. Plus, with Vrabel as the coach, a kind of smash mouth style, that would fit very well for them. The Bengals is another place that he could potentially go to. That old Zach Taylor guy, I mean, I have no clue about him. I know nothing about him. I guess he's only called five games before this season. They hired him as a head coach. Now he's a full-time offense coordinator. Andy Dalton had no shot. I watched that game a little bit this weekend. That Bengals team looks like that's a, that's a tough place to go. No indoor facility. It's very cold. Food, notoriously bad. Not a great place to go, I guess. But players go there and do well. Shout out Pac-Man. Shout out to Andy Dalton, who's a fan of the show. But I think those days are about numbered for Andy Dalton. Cam Newton going there could potentially expedite the process of them not being a terrible program organization anymore. The Denver Broncos. Joe Flacco, who has been nothing short of elite since appearing on our podcast two Fridays ago. They have been undefeated. They have performed very well. I like Joe Flacco. Let's say Joe Flacco gets dinged up, though. What do the Broncos do? Maybe bring in old Cam Newton. And what a circle of life story that would be since the Denver Broncos and Vaughn Miller were potentially the team that stripped Cam Newton's happiness from him in that Super Bowl. If he was able to go out there and do well, a lot of quarterbacks who can do well in Denver will get welcomed back like the heroes that they are. Peyton Manning has a parade there, I think, every single day. It feels like Peyton Manning is in Denver every (laughs) single weekend, as he should be. Took him to a couple of Super Bowls. That could be a place. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Is his style good? For Bruce Arians' offense, uh, uh, Bruce Arians is, is hucking that rock, bro. I mean, that's what Bruce Arians is doing. Cam Newton, I've never said he has a weak arm. I think he has a great arm. I don't know how he is as a passer because I don't think you get to see it enough here in recent history because he's either hurt or they're running or something's going on. Maybe Cam Newton goes to Tampa Bay Buccaneers does well. In the landing spot that we think would be an instant game changer for the team that it involves. A team whose defense was being heralded as the next 2000 Ravens defense. A team going into the season, people were like, this team can do some real damage. This team was one kicker away, they say. One blocked kick, double doink kick away from potentially making a run last year. They're back this year. Quarterback gets hurt. Backup quarterback doesn't do great. If this guy was the land. In the midway for the Chicago Bears, if Cam Newton was to become the Chicago Bears quarterback, I think the Chicago Bears become a better football team immediately. And I think that is a team you have to really think about if they were to shoot their shot with the Carolina Panthers. I'm not sure they have much to give because they gave away everything for Khalil Mack, but I'm not sure how much Carolina Panthers would have to have to get in return to get rid of them because that's going to be quite a situation. We're not saying they're trading Cam Newton. We're saying if they were to trade Cam Newton, where they would go. Conversation came up in our 13-person discussion before the show on if he was going to the Cowboys, you think the Cowboys are better. So I put a poll to the people. I said, excuse me, if you're Jerry Jones and he's on the trading block, would you rather Cam Newton or Dak Prescott? And 58% of the people who voted Dak Prescott. We got 34,000 votes. What a fall for grace, by the way, for Cam Newton. Cam Newton was being talked about as one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Now a guy who has definitely struggled, who I guess is on the eve of getting a pretty rather large contract, who has not done well, blows him out of the water by 16 points. That's a wild thing right there. That's a wild thing for me. The Cowboys fans have been coming after me for even posting the poll. I even said this is not my thoughts. This is just a thought. Posting the poll. Cowboys fans love them some Dak Prescott, which I appreciate. I respect. 
he's going to have to win some games, though, because as soon as you pay him, let's say, $84 million guaranteed and he struggles just a little bit, you're all going to turn on him very quickly. And I think the Cowboys, the Cowboys need to start doing better, and I hope Dak Prescott gets broken off. But, boy, we're forced to watch them, man, and I hope they become a good football I think that poll just shows how far Cam has fallen and how bad he has looked the last two years. He's a bad. That, that many people would rather have Dak, who, I mean, he's – He's, he's a, he, Dak's average. Dak's looked average. Uh, you're going to get buried for that. <laughs> yes. I just want to, you know, like, I don't know if that was on camera or not, like if people saw your face there. These Cowboys fans love Dak Prescott, and I appreciate the fact that they love their quarterback, by the way. I appreciate the hell out of that. They stuck by Tony Romo for his bad times, his good times, and his bad times again. They, they welcome back Jason Witten with open arms. That Cowboys fan base is an incredible one, a loyal one. Jerry Jones is an incredible owner. He's been able to build up a franchise that has withstood the test of failure. They've remained a famous, popular team, even with all of their failures that they have had, because of how good an owner Jerry Jones is and how good of a franchise that Dallas Cowboys team is. But, man, they've been so average. If something doesn't give there with Jason Garrett... I got, a call, I got a call from John Daly yesterday. I think he's, oh. he's not happy. I don't think, I don't think he's happy. I, want to, I didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think he's not happy with how I'm talking about. Yeah, he loves the Dallas Cowboys. He loves Jerry Jones. And yesterday I, I asked, did Jerry Jones lose his edge because he's just accepting mediocrity with this Jason Garrett thing and not even thinking about firing him? I would assume Jerry Jones potentially heard that and said, you tell that man to me, I didn't lose. <laughs> <laughs> We'll find out. So is Dak a victim of circumstance here with a an, an ever-mediocre team? Maybe. I don't know. But to think that the question, even posing the question, made these Dallas Cowboys fans upset, to me, is hilarious. Like, that is a hilarious thing to happen, and I hope they start winning for those Dallas Cowboys fans who deserve a team to be well and do well. They're delusional. They're delusional Cowboys fans. It's how they've always been. It's how they always will be. You should not say what you're saying. Well, no, it's not what you're saying. It's what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. You're going to get killed for this. I mean, I'm speaking the truth, so I shouldn't be killed. That, 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 people have been dying for the truth for a long time. <laughs> I've been killed for a lot less. A long time. You know what? If that's how I go out, that's how I go out. Oh, very noble. <laughs> <laughs> that's an admiral. No. <laughs> it's very, right. very admiral. Very admiral, see? Oh, yeah. You know what would be, right, though, you know what would be interesting is... Maybe a guy like Andy Dalton in Dallas. Yeah, he went to TCU. He gets some weapons around him. I think he. I Don't think he can even perform say well what you there. just said, right there. Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, yesterday on Get Up, they were asking, "Would you rather have Dak Prescott or Sam Darnold after that game on Sunday?" I mean, that's oh, and Greeny said, "I would take Sam Darnold ten times out of ten, or right. whatever." And did you see? He got ratioed on that tweet. <laughs> he got ratioed on that thing. I appreciate and respect the hell out of these Cowboys fans. I really do. They are with them through and through because it's just been mediocre stuff here for a long time, and they are all in. They're just waiting for that team to bust through. They're just waiting for that team to go back to the glory days when they were just an unstoppable force, when the star on the helmet meant that when they arrived in your stadium, you are in for a long day. It was going to be tough to beat the Dallas Cowboys, a well-coached team, an energetic team, a team – that at any given moment could win any given game. Dallas Cowboys show up in a lot of stadiums right now. Everybody knows it's going to happen. They're going to lose. <laughs> they are probably going to lose. That's just the way it is. And I would assume I, you can't. If they're telling me that Dak's the only person playing good on the team, a lot of people tweeting me. Okay, so if Dak's playing good, Zeke rushed for 100 yards last week. The defense says we're beating ourselves. Whose desk does that fall upon? Who's destined to fall upon? The head coach then? Is that what, the if coach? everybody's playing good, if everybody's playing good, yeah, right. and they're losing, and they're 29th in time of possession, 29th in field position, and 30th in turnovers, if everybody's playing good, Cowboys fans, all we want to know is whose fault is it then? That's all I want to know. Much better than everyone, and, and like, just give it up. We're going to start to do, like, sympathy awards for everyone else. Max, who's the better MVP candidate? Patrick Mahomes. And I'm saying that coming off a loss. He's so much better than everyone. And, and like, just give it up. We're going to start to do, like, sympathy awards for everyone else in the league. Look, that was a second consecutive loss. At home, right? Are they 
protecting him? Does he have a bad ankle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he throw an interception? No, he did not. He did not throw an interception. Uh, the, the headlines, Deshaun Watson outduels Patrick Mahomes. No, he didn't. One touchdown, two interceptions, to three touchdowns, no interceptions. When he threw the so-called interception, he saw a clear penalty on the play. He thought he had a free play. Tony Dungy pointed this out on the broadcast. Uh, in, in, in the, the post-game analysis, he throws the ball down the field, which you're supposed to do. It results in an interception. Give me a break. He had a free play. And even if it wasn't pass interference, it was at least, what would you call that, illegal contact, right? So tackling. Tackling. So it's a five-yard penalty first down. He knows the worst outcome from this play is I get five yards and a first down. I'm going to take a shot down the field exactly what he's supposed to do. It winds up an interception in a game decided by one score. I'm, by the way, on a bum leg where he's throwing off his back foot, you can see it the rest of the game. He's still, if you just isolate quarterback play, he's better than everybody else. Now 14 touchdowns, one interception, but because they're not protecting him, they're not running the ball, and a couple of other issues with the Chiefs right now, but including not his full complement of players yet, Mahomes is somehow to blame for this. If you put Mahomes, even with a bad wheel, on any other team, including the Packers, that team just got better today. Just got better. He's the best player in the league. Well, first of all, you're wrong. And secondly, one of the reasons why you're wrong is because you continuously try to change the narrative. Can you do us a favor and stick to the point? It's not about who's the best, most talented player. It's about who's most valuable. And if you take Mahomes off the Kansas City Chiefs, although I will concede Mahomes is out of this world, nobody is debating that. I'm really getting sick and tired of having this discussion with you because you act like when you speak, no one else knows that Mahomes is a bad brother. We concede that. The most valuable player, sometimes what comes into a play match is how valuable are you to your team because what would your team be without you? It ain't about whether or not you're better. If that's the case, Michael Jordan should have won the, the MVP award every single Correct. year. Shaquille O'Neal should have won it every year. No, 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 that's not necessarily true because as somebody that was covering the league, I'm here to tell you, there were times where other people just were more valuable to their team because the parts that were around you never mattered. It doesn't mean that Magic Michael Jordan wasn't the greatest. It wasn't mean that Shaq wasn't the most dominant. I look at Patrick Mahomes yesterday, and here's what I'm saying about Deshaun Watson. Look, you look at Patrick Mahomes, you got Andy Reid. Tyreek Hill was back, all right? He immediately showed us he was back. We see the pieces that they have available to them. I'm looking at Houston, even though I get major props because DeAndre Hopkins, his own world, I'm looking at Fuller. He's had some good days. He's had some bad passes where he's dropped. You know, Kenny Stills, all of these guys. I'm looking at Carlos Hyde. He had a good game rush to the football yesterday. I get all of that. But I'm looking at Deshaun Watson. And tell me, what is he not doing? He ran for two touchdowns yesterday. He threw another. He makes plays when you call upon him to make plays. He shows up in big moments. We know he can make the requisite throws. Also, we've had questions about Bill O'Brien. And what Bill O'Brien brings to the table, even though there are questions about Andy Reid, it ain't to the degree that there's questions about Bill O'Brien. So if you're looking at Bill O'Brien, if you're looking at the lack of an offensive line that Deshaun Watson has had available to him for the most part since he's been to Houston, when you look at the requisite weapons, which to me, even though they compare now, it's because of Deshaun Watson making it look like it compared. But when you look at the requisite weapons, those weapons were elite when Alex Smith was the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs for crying out loud. I'm looking at Deshaun Watson, and I'm like, this brother is all world. I'm not going to say he's better than Patrick Mahomes. That's what I'm, I'm not debating that. What I'm saying is when you look at what he brings to the table for Houston, and you ask yourself, what would each team be without those guys? I think Kansas City would be exponentially better without Patrick Mahomes than Houston would be without Deshaun Watson. If we swap quarterbacks, do you think one team got better or worse? No. I would say they're very similar. I think Patrick I think Mahomes we have undervalued think, Deshaun Watson. Yes, we have. I haven't undervalued Deshaun Watson. Yes, you have. Oh, I thought yes, you have. I, I didn't say Deshaun Watson. We didn't say you. We didn't say you said. We did not say you said. We did not say you said Deshaun Watson wasn't a damn good player, if not a great player. We did not accuse you of that. What we're saying when you undervalue him is when you act like there is no discussion whatsoever when you bring Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson into the same sentence. That is undervaluing him I because saw. you have repeatedly talked about what your criteria is. He might not be here with you every day. 
but I am. And I've listened to you for three years talk about the MVP category. And you didn't just talk about the best player. You talk about those big moments because you talk about how it separates the men from the boys. Will you tell me what big moment that Deshaun Watson hasn't showed up since we've been watching him in college? Don't act like you're putting me up on Deshaun Watson. I took Clemson to beat your Alabama. So what? Because they had Deshaun Watson. I give him credit for all that. I'm saying even when you give someone credit for all that, like Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers, I give Tom Brady all the credit, but at their best, Aaron Rodgers was better. I just watched it with my own eyes. I can see. Mahomes does things no one else can do. That includes... Yeah, 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 but, but that's just what... Does things... Up. So you're going to sit here with a straight face and tell me that you see Mahomes do things that it's impossible for Deshaun Watson to do. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, maybe that not, is asinine. Agree, not yet that is asinine. That's, 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 that's a different talent level. That's I, 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 would, I would argue that Watson's done things that Mahomes can't do as a runner. You know, like, they're both great players, but I think that the gap that you're putting out there with Mahomes and Watson is this. And I re- I believe it's way closer than you want to admit. And let me be very good. Let me but be very clear. Let, 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 let me be, 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 hold on, guys. Hold on. Let me be very clear on what I'm trying to say. The only thing I have seen Mahomes do that I've never seen Deshaun Watson do is throw a no-look pass. And that's because Across his body running the wrong way. But that's because Deshaun Watson okay. doesn't try. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube.